with all these words, you know what we're going to do. We're going to turn these words into some math. The Ross and Max combined weight is 184 pounds. We're going to use the obvious variables here. We're going to say Ross is R combined with Max. M gives us 184. Then Ross R combined with Seth S gives us 197. Then Max M combined with Seth S gives us 189. Now we have a nice system of equations here. We can tackle this with substitution. We could tackle this with elimination. But I see something exciting over here on the left-hand side. Right there, we've got some beautiful symmetry. We have every possible combination of two of Ross, Max, and Seth. We have R and M, R and S, M and S. When I see symmetry like that, I like to look for a way to combine all three equations. Combine all three of these in a clever way that helps me. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to add them all. I'm going to add all three equations because that gives me two of each of R, M, and S on the left-hand side. So two times the sum, R plus M plus S, equals the sum of these over here. Now, adding these up, well, those look like annoying numbers to add. So I'm going to pretend they're all 200. If they're all 200 and I add all three of them, well, that gives me 600. But each one of these is a little less than 200, so now I need to adjust a little bit. This is 16 less. This is 3 less. That gives me a total of 19 less. This is another 11 less. So that's a total of 30 less than that sum of 600. That leaves me with 570. Now I'm going to divide both sides here by 2. I'm going to get R plus M plus S. The sum of all three is 285. And now I can just read off R, M, and S by combining this with these up here. Now the one I really care about, of course, is Ross. I want to find R here in these equations, but I've got M plus S sitting right there. That's 189, so I can drop that right in here. I get R plus 189 is 285. Subtract the 189 from both sides, and R is 96. And you can go back and solve this with your substitution elimination. I'll bet you find R is 96. On to the next problem. All right, I've got words and a picture here. All right, I've got line segment AE shown. B is the midpoint of segment AC. I want to remember that, so I'm going to mark that. A, B, and B, C are equal. D is the midpoint of C, E. I want to remember that as well. So we mark that with two little hashes. All right, we've got A, D is 19. So that means that this length here, oh, not 19, it's 17, is 17. All right, and B, E is 21. So this length here is 21. I want the length of segment AE. Huh. I got a picture, I got diagrams and all these words. I got to build some equations. I can throw some variables in here because then maybe I can build an equation. I'm going to call these two equal pieces. I'm going to call each of those is x. Each of these over here is y. I'm going to keep our eye on the ball here. We're going to write down what we're looking for. We're looking for the whole thing. AE is 2 times the sum x plus y. So if I can find x and y, I can solve the problem. Or even better, if I can find the sum of x plus y, I don't even have to find x and y. That'd be nice. So now we need to build the equations. Well, look right here. I've got an equation staring me right in the face right there. 2x plus a y gives us 17. So there's one equation. 2x plus y is 17. And then over here I have another equation. x plus the 2y is our 21. And once again, I have a system of equations. I could use substitution, or I could use elimination, or I can see some symmetry going on on the left-hand side. I'm just going to add these up again. If I add these up, I have 3x's, 3y's, 3 times x plus y is 38. And all I care about is x plus y. I don't care what x and y actually are. So I divide both sides by 3, I get x plus y is 38 thirds. And I just substitute this right in here. 2 times 38 thirds gives us 76 thirds as a solution. We've exploited symmetry to get the answer again. On to the next problem. All right, more geometry. They don't give us the diagram. Areas of the faces of a rectangular prism are 54, 24, 36, and we want the length of the space diagonal. I'm going to go ahead and draw the diagram or try to, and we'll call this a rectangular prism. It's close enough. All 
All right, we got to remove dash lines in the back. And we're going to add our dimensions. I'm going to call this Z. This one up here we'll call Y. And this one over here we'll call X. And uh, space diagonal. So as this thing kind of in here goes like this. How do we find the length of that? Uh, where's Harvey when you need him? All right, we're going to break out. Bring out the Pythagorean theorem. We can build lots of right triangles here. I'm going to start up here in a face diagonal. This right triangle up here, x and y, those are the legs. So our hypotenuse to find the hypotenuse, we have one leg squared, add the other leg squared, and take the square root. So that's our face diagonal right there. I've got another right triangle right here. And my space diagonal is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So to find the length of that, well, I take the square of this leg, square of that, you get x squared plus y squared. And then you add on the square of this leg, which is just z squared. And then you take the square root of all that. And that gives us our hypotenuse, this space diagonal. So if I can figure out what x, y, and z are, then we're golden. Then we can solve the problem. All right, so I'm gonna draw a line here. I'm gonna try to figure out what x, y, and z are. Well, we can build some equations from the areas of the faces here. I'll go ahead and say that x and y go together. x times y is 54. And I'll say y times z is 24. And z times x is 36. Now, we got a little lucky here, right? We can look at these numbers and just guess the answer. Because 54, that just looks like 9 times 6. 9 times 6. 24 just looks like 6 times 4. 6 times 4. And then, sure enough, at the end, we have 4 times 9 is 36. So we can guess and check our way to the answer here. But that's not very sporty. You know, because that doesn't tell us how we would have solved this problem if, you know, these numbers over here hadn't been so nice. What if these numbers weren't even integers? Then guessing your x and y is, is going to be a lot harder. Or what if x and y just didn't happen to be in integers? You know, there's nothing that forces x and y to be integers. How would we handle this? How can we find x, y, and z from these equations without just guessing? Now, we can use our substitution or elimination sorts of strategies here. But again, we see symmetry. We see symmetry. We like symmetry. So we look for a way to exploit that symmetry. It's over here on the left-hand side. Now, if we add this, we get xy plus yz plus zx, which is still kind of a mess. How can we combine these to get something interesting? We can multiply them. Now, you know, we think of multiplying here because these are all products. You know, in the earlier two problems, we had sums on the right-hand side, and we added them all up. Here we have products on the right-hand side, so we're going to multiply them all instead. Look what happens when we multiply. I'm going to multiply these. There are two x's over here. That's going to give me an x squared. There are two y's over here. Give me a y squared, two z's over here. Sure enough, we have x squared, y squared, z squared. Now over here, I don't want to multiply all these numbers out. I'm going to stay a little bit more organized than multiplying all this out. I'm going to think, whenever I start thinking about products and divisibility and all that sorts of stuff, I start thinking in terms of prime factorizations. This is 2 times 3 cubed. This is 2 cubed times 3. And this is 2 squared, 3 squared. So when I multiply all these together, we get something nice here. We've got 2 to the 6th times 3 to the 6th. So now I can just, uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for x squared, y squared, and z squared. Right? So I can use this in combination with these up here to find x squared, y squared, and z squared. So to get x squared, I can take this product, x squared, y squared, z squared, which is our 2 to the 6th times 3 to the 6th. I have to divide out y squared, z squared. I want to get rid of that, but yz is right here. And then I have to square that, because I'm getting rid of y squared, z squared. I'm getting rid of the 2 to the 6th. I'm getting rid of a 3 squared. And I'm left with 3 to the 4th. That's 9 squared. That's 81. Now, I can do the same thing with y squared and with z squared. So y squared is going to be 2 to the 6th times 3 to the 6th. I want to divide out this the square of xz, the square of xz, I square this, I have 2 to the 4th, 3 to the 4th. It's going to leave me 2 squared times 3 squared. Of course, that's 6 squared, which is 36. And then finally, I've got z squared. 
z squared, I need to divide out the xy squared. So I'm going to have 2 to the 6th, 3 to the 6th. I'm going to divide off the square of xy. I'm going to divide off the 2 squared times the 3 to the 6th. That's going to leave me 2 to the 4th, otherwise known as 16. So now I've got my x squared, I've got my y squared, I've got my z squared, and I just add them up. 36 and 16 gives me 52. Add the 52 to the 81, I get 133. So my answer is the square root of 133. And that is how we exploit symmetry.